so excited that you are here with us for service. My name is Winter. And I'm Brian. And like Winter said, it's so great to see you guys. My voice is a little bit gone from worship, y'all. <laughs> Uh, it's so great to see you in the house, whether this is your first time or you've been here for 50 years or more. So great to see you. If today is your first time or maybe you've only been coming for a few, a week or two or three, uh, we would love a chance to get to meet you at Connect Corner. It happens out in our main lobby. Uh, you probably passed by it on your way in. But check out Connect Corner today. Uh, meet some of our team. We've got a team there who would love to get to know you. And we've got a free gift just as a way of saying thanks for being here today. And also happening right after service today is our new people party. So like Brian said, if it's your first time today or maybe you've just been a couple, coming for a couple of weeks, come hang out with us right after service, new people party. It's going to be right through that exit sign, right over there, right to those through those doors in our new people party room. Lunch is on us. We have another gift for you. It's for your whole family. Great opportunity for you to meet some of our home team members and some of our staff, but really for us to get to know you better get you plugged in, answer any questions you may have. So come hang out with us at the New People Party right after service. Yeah, we have child care available for that yeah. as well. So if you have kids, you can uh, drop them off at the nursery counter and we'll take care of them while you're at New People Party. And you can double dip. Check out Connect <laughs> Corner, go to New People Party. It's a big day. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, I want to introduce my friends, the Jaspersons, to you. They're going to make their way on up. Can you guys give them a hand really quick while they come up? We've got a guest speaker in the house this morning. We're going to get to Pastor Darren's message in just a minute. But I want to introduce my friend, Christian, to you. Everybody say hi to Christian. <laughs> Christian's going to preach a quick word to you guys and share something with you. So turn your attention to him. Thank you everyone for letting me come up and talk to you all today. It's good practice because when I grow up, I'm probably going to be a judge, but then I just might have to take Pastor Darren Stroll. <laughs> My name is Christian Jasperson. It was an emergency. I was born three months early and only weighed three pounds. Even after all the surgeries, I was born complicated gastroschisis, so my intestines were outside my body. It was an emergency. I was born three months early, and uh, even after lots of surgeries, Oklahoma just couldn't fix me. But everyone, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18, verses, no, chapter 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So God sent me to Boston Children's Hospital. That saved my life. I still have to go to Boston every few months because it's hard for me to grow and my liver to work. So, so then I just I'm getting stronger. I still have battle scars, but Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. I am weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, everyone, for praying for me for so long. I wouldn't be here without you. Now, everyone, turn your Bibles back to Matthew chapter 18, verses 19, 20. If two or three or the whole church gathers in prayers, the Lord will hear us. He is with us. Now I better pass the mic. Michelle Schwinn from Make-A-Wish Foundation is here to grant my wish. Not because I'm dying, because I'm living. Now I better pass the mic back because my, my mom said if I hold my sermon too long, there might not be time for Rom's ice cream after church. Come and join me on Zero Street.
I'm Jocelyn with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Sorry, my voice is going too, I think. I've been granting wishes since 2015, and this is the first guy who's invited me to church, so I'm so glad. He said that was his favorite place to be, so this is where he wanted his wish send-off to be, so praise the Lord for that. His wish was to meet Sheriff Woody from Toy Story, so I'm so thankful to be able to send him to that. But more than that, you know, you guys have the opportunity to speak into his life every day. You guys have been praying for him, feeding his soul, and that is such a bigger thing, really, than a one-time opportunity. So I'm so grateful to see all of you guys here and to hear how you've prayed for him through his trial. And, you know, because we live in a sinful and fallen world, Christian, there will be more trials to come. But you already know the Savior, who is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, right? and he will help you persevere through them all. So I'm thankful for his church family. That's, that's such an awesome blessing. So thanks to each of you guys. Isn't that so cool? Give them one more big hand as they exit. So cool. We love this family very much. Like they said, so many of you guys have been praying for them. Uh, for before Christian was even born. And so um, we're really excited this morning to start a brand new series on the Holy Spirit. Pastor Darren's gonna preach in just a moment. But before he comes, would you turn your eyes to the screen? Good morning, good morning. Man, what, what a day. Uh, I just uh, I told uh, Caleb back there, I said, how in the world am I supposed to preach after that? I mean, good grief. Uh, Caleb, uh, uh, Christian brought the word this morning, and Christian, you did an outstanding job. I just want to let you know. Can, can we let him know? <laughs> outstanding. Uh, what you don't know is that his mama has been sending me videos of him standing on the hearth of the fireplace preaching for a long, long time. Uh, for years now, this kid's been standing and he's a preacher and he preaches the word of God. And so Christian, that was your first opportunity at big church and I bet you there's gonna be some more opportunities to come. That was wonderful. So way to go, awesome. Um, it's amazing that we can come into this place and experience God's presence in such tangible ways. And even through a child that can speak God's word, we know the truth when we hear it, amen. Many of you are wiping tears and I just want you to know that's a good thing. These are tears of joy for you, Christian. Uh, we love you very much. Um, last week, and if you don't mind, Devin, you guys continue to play for me. It just kind of helps me a little bit, get my mind straight here. I, went, I believe that last week was a, a very pivotal week, a very pivotal day in the life and the history of this church. Back in the fall, God spoke to me some very clear things, did not give me exactly everything that I was supposed to have all at once. In fact, I was talking to some of you about it over the course of months. But as I continued to pray, the Holy Spirit continued to reveal. And last week, many of you stood up and walked forward. You had made a commitment. You made a decision that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe that last Sunday was a very important week. I think it was important for some very some some strong families. You're all, your family was already believers. You were already strong, but you needed to be reminded. So the Word of God reminds us and instructs us. The Word of God is full of principles. And I want to commend every one of you who stood up. I asked for 50 men and 50 women who would stand up and who would be people of God that asked for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you were not here last week, I, I highly, I strongly suggest you go back and watch that powerful, that powerful weekend message. But this is what you committed to do. You committed to live as God instructs us to live. 
You committed to read the word daily. You committed to pray for your family. If you're married you can, and you're a man, you, you, you committed to pray for your wife. You committed to pray out loud for your children. You committed to, to teach the next generation how to pray and how to be a person of God. Not, not perfect, but a person that is going to, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So last week was a very pivotal day, and I just wanted to come behind that and just say prophetically, I do believe that God is calling our church, and I believe that he's going to use this church in this river valley, Spyro and Poto and, and Pecola, Oklahoma, and Greenwood and Fort Smith and Van Buren and Alma. I believe that God is going to do some things in this place, but he's going to use you. He's looking for some people that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, I'm coming by today just to remind you of those decisions that you made. But I believe that the next three messages that I'm about to share are very important so you can be filled with the Spirit of God so that you would have the power of God so you could be changed into the people that God wants us to be. We're going to be taking a fresh look at this. So turn in your Bibles at Genesis chapter 1 to the very beginning. If you're a new Bible reader, Genesis, the very beginning, chapter 1, verse 1. The foundation scripture for today is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, everybody say the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've called us for such a time as this, for us to be gathered in your name and gathered all together today. Every person that's supposed to be here is here. There's not one person here by, uh, here by coincidence, Lord. We're here on purpose for a purpose, and that is to hear this word. I believe you're calling us. I believe that you're leading us. I believe, God, that you are filling us. And I pray, Father, that you would anoint me, Lord, to be able to say what, I, what you want me to say, nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, Father, that your presence is strong in this place. Thank you that Christian Jasperson came today to deliver a word already. Now, Lord, we thank you, God, that you're speaking to us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God has been active from the very beginning. The Ruach, or in the Hebrew, in Strong's, you'll find this in 7307, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind of God, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit was active from the very beginning in the very first verse of the very first book of the Bible. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about the Holy Spirit. In fact, there's a lot of bad teaching on the Holy Spirit. There is an avoidance of Scripture or avoidance of teaching of Scripture on the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit is blamed for a lot of things. There, there's been a lot of things I've seen blamed on the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to take a fresh lens, a fresh look, a fresh look at what God's Word has to say about the Holy Spirit. Is that fair? That we would do that. Today, and the reason why we're doing this is because there's always new people coming into the church. And, and in fact, in the, in the month of March, 202 people went to Connect Corner and they said, we're brand new here at Connect Corner. Two, over 200 people just in March. Now that's awesome and, and I'm thankful for that and I'm thanking God that he's doing something fresh and new right here in, in this church. But when you have 200 people come into the fellowship, when they're coming in, they're bringing also the theology, the doctrine, and all the things that they've thought from the past. So I think it's important that we, in this house, in this fellowship, that we would take a look at what does the Bible have to say about this very important subject. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just open up the Bible, and we're going to teach the Bible. For the next three weeks, you're going to hear what the Bible has to say from, the, from a fresh lens and a fresh approach of just Scripture. Because I know that tradition can be, I'm not saying that it is, tradition can be an intellectual prison for you. I'm not saying that it is for you. I'm just saying that 
tradition, your tradition, your past, your bad teaching, your bad theology, or what you brought to the table. How, how many of you know everybody's coming from somewhere? I heard a very, a very smart lady said that a long time ago. I remember I wrote it down. We're all coming from somewhere. Everybody has brought your past and whatever it is that you've been taught or whatever it is that you don't know about the Holy Spirit, you've brought that to this place. So we're just going to look and see what the Bible has to say. In fact, we need less religious people in the church and more spirit-filled people in the church. We're all coming from different places. So we all believe that how we were taught is normal. <laughs> Or we do believe that what we're taught could be abnormal, depending on where you come from. In fact, the differences in what we believe in, in a church and also in a home can create some tension. Everybody say tension. Now, I want y'all to relax today because today we're just going to look and see what the Bible says. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit is not, is not full of tension. The Holy Spirit does not bring tension. In fact, peace is what you should experience when the Holy Spirit is near. So what we believe and how we were taught, we all believe that that is normal or that is right. So today I'm going to tell you about Carrie and I. We, we, were, we were raised up in this church. We met each other the first time that my eyes saw my future bride was in this place. She was 13 years old. I remember what she was wearing that day. In fact, we were having a little party. We had some cake and we had some punch and it was boys serve the girls day. So how many of you know what I did? I made a beeline for the cake and the punch and I went over, straight over to her when she was wearing that white shawl that had some, some, some fringes on it. And I took that cake and punch to her and I said, hi, hi. where have you been all my life? <laughs> all my 13 years. But even though we were raised in the same church, even though both of our sets of parents were believers, we still had some differences that we had not uncovered until we started raising children. So it's a good idea to talk about things before you get married. In fact, if you're living to go, it's a good time to get married. I'm just gonna have to say that right now. I'm not gonna back away from what the Bible says. That was free, that didn't cost you anything. You're welcome. And Pastor, you're kind of bold. I'm just going to tell you what the Word says. All right, that's, I'm sorry. You're going to talk about the Bible. That's all we're going to talk about. Okay, so I'm telling you, when we started raising Hunter, it created some tension because when he was in seventh grade, uh, there was an event that, that there was a, an event at Chaffin. There, it was called a dance. And Freemans don't dance. Okay, I was just taught, I, you know, I'd never been in the movie theater and, and, and I'd never listened to that worldly music and, and, and all of those things were, were off limits for me. But Carrie's mom and dad, and I understand that they're watching online today, so uh, I've got wonderful in-laws. I love them very much. You just raised your daughter much differently than my mom and dad raised me. I love you. <laughs> I'll see you at lunch. <laughs> However, so when I was being raised... Uh, there, was, there was something happening on Saturday nights from time to time, and they were called Elvis Presley Specials. Anybody of you ever remember those? Now, she was allowed to watch Elvis Presley Specials. But the Freeman household, we didn't watch Elvis Presley Specials, and the reason why, there was a lot of hip gyrating, and there was a lot of things going on in that worldly devil music, and we don't listen and participate. Okay? So, but she was allowed to do that. We're both raised in Christian homes, believers, saved, going to heaven, raised in the same church. Listen to that devil music. <laughs> but we didn't listen to that. And so as, as Hunter, he wanted to go to the dance. And she says, Hunter's going to the dance. There's a seventh grade dance. I said, Freemans don't dance. And she said, what? This created some tension. Believers? Yes. Christians? Yes. Raised in church? Yes. But we had two different beliefs. Now, uh, Carrie won. <laughs> and if you've ever, if you know my, yesterday was his birthday. If you know Hunter Freeman, Freemans do dance. 
<laughs> that boy, he's something else. But, but tension, it created some tension. Now, I told you that story because it's funny and it's true, but that's the reality of every single person here. We all come in bringing some tradition. Would you agree with that? So when we look at this, this tradition or our past experience, our backgrounds and how we was taught, whether it was wrong or whether it was right, we all bring all of that to the table and we bring that here and it, it creates some confusion, it can create some tension. And so today, because we know that this is what makes this topic a little more difficult than others, because what we're gonna do is just look through the lens of scripture. Because most people that reject teaching uh, on the Holy Spirit, they're rejecting bad experiences, they're rejecting weird experiences, they're rejecting strange experiences. Can I just say off the, at the very beginning of this message that the Holy Spirit is not weird, but people are weird. <laughs> the reason why I know people are weird is because I'm weird, you're weird, we're all a little bit weird. And so I, I said at the very beginning that the Holy Spirit gets blamed for a whole lot of things. I've even seen the Holy Spirit be blamed for things that was not, <laughs> was not the Holy Spirit because it created confusion, it created doubt, it, 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 it was weird, it, it was strange. We, if you've ever been in a, in a, or a, or a, a church like this, then you can understand that what I'm saying, I'm not making light of it, I'm just acknowledging it, okay? I'm just acknowledging it. So when you understand who the Holy Spirit is, you won't run away from him. In fact, I believe that you will run to him. Can we look beyond our tradition can we look beyond our past and can we just look to see what the Bible has to say? Foundation thought number one. I hope you brought something to write with. I hope you brought something to write on. We're a note-taking church, a Bible-believing church. If you're new here, God bless you. I'm glad you're here. You jumped in on a great day, a great new series. Foundation thought number one. Write this down. When you get saved... The Holy Spirit lives in you. Pause. Selah. Think about that. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit is now living in you. See, when we place our trust in Christ and we ask for forgiveness of our sin, when we call upon the name of the Lord and we get saved, when we believe on Jesus and when we get saved... Our spiritual journey has begun. Our, thing, the, our, our heart and our mind and our spirit is open to things of the spirit now, and we're seeking spiritual things. We, our sanctification process has now begun, and now we're starting to live more and more like Jesus. In fact, there were some people that took some steps today. They got saved. They believed on Christ. They said, now I'm saved, and they got baptized just a few moments ago. I celebrate that because what they're doing is they're making a public declaration of a decision that they made to say, I am now a believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow him and I'm going to become more and more like him. Now that's exciting news and I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing because people are getting saved and baptized in this place. Congratulations, your, your journey has begun. And so let me just say congratulations to every person that you got baptized out there in the foyer a few moments ago. The Holy Spirit is living in you from the moment that you ask for forgiveness of your sin. The Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside. In fact, the Bible says that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit living in us. You're not just forgiven. You now have the Holy Spirit living inside you. That's foundation principle number one. Now, Earlier today, and I'm not going to do that again. I cut this orange. That orange, that knife is so sharp, I'm not picking it up again. But how many of you know what's inside this? It's not a trick question. <laughs> it's not trick. How many of you know what's inside this? Okay. I cut one just like it open, so this is not a trick question. And, and I want to let you know that I don't have to squeeze this to know what's going to come out of it, but I'm going to do it just for you. But I know that when I squeeze this, bacon juice is not coming out. 
When I squeeze this orange, I know what's going to come out. And I'm not going to squeeze very much because I don't want to get my hands all sticky. But did you all see what came out of that? What was that? That's orange juice. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. How many of you know life has a way of squeezing us? And when you get squeezed, the Spirit of God is what should be coming out of you. The orange is known for its juice. The believer should be known for the Spirit of God living in us. Life has a way of putting the squeeze on us from time to time. We find ourselves in valleys. My friend Christian has been living in some valleys in his little life. And how many of you know when he stood on this platform a moment ago, you could sense the Spirit of God in him. Coming out of him was the Spirit of God. And as his little life gets squeezed, we should see the Spirit of God coming out of him. There's some of you, you've been walking through some difficult valleys for many, many months right now. You are, you're here and you are among us. I wouldn't embarrass you for the world, but I can tell you this. I've seen the Spirit of God coming out of you because his Spirit is living in you. And I'm strengthened because of that. Life is full of pressure. And so, just like I squeezed that orange, the Holy Spirit should be coming from us. In fact, when you get saved, God is not a million miles away from you. God is not an abstract thought. God is not something that we would just kind of think about and just kind of ponder. No, when you get saved, God is living in you in the Holy Spirit. This is foundation principle number one. Foundation principle number two, write this down. The Holy Spirit was present from the very beginning. We serve one God in three persons. This is what we refer to as the Trinity. We serve God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. We did a six weeks series on prayer earlier. Our Father in God the Father, he's in heaven, hallowed be his name. We are fine with God the Father. The second person of the Trinity, God the Son. We're good with Jesus. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And we're good with God the Father, God the Son. But this Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, we don't get a lot of teaching and we have a lot of misconceptions and we don't have a lot of teaching and training uh, on this, but the Holy Spirit is the third person. Holy Spirit is not an it, the third person of the Trinity. The execution arm or the a, a, a executive arm, the Holy Spirit makes things happen on the earth. And I'm going to show that to you in a moment in Scripture. God the Father, one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. We talk a whole lot about the first two, but very little about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is on the earth executing the will of the Father on this earth. Now, I'm going to help you understand that with another little analogy because we are visual people. This is a pitcher of water with a few drops of orange juice inside. <laughs> but this is a, a pitcher of water. Everybody, are you with me so far? Would everyone in the room agree with me that this is water and it is in liquid form? You can see that. If I was to put this in some sort of a pot and put it on a stove and heated it up, it would still be water, but it would turn into steam. You're a smart group. <laughs> You're a smart group. It would turn into steam. It's still water, but it turns into a different expression, a different form. Now it's steam. If I was to put this in, it's liquid. If I was to put this water in, in a freezer, it would eventually, over a little bit of time, it would turn into a solid mass of, but it's still, you're with me. Now, if I was to take this, a frozen mass of water that was actually now ice, and take it out of the freezer and put it on the counter, over some time, it would turn back into, it would be a liquid, but it's water. It's still water. Water 
steam, ice. It's three expressions, but it is all the same. It's three different shapes. It's three different forms, but it's all water. The Holy Spirit was present at the very beginning. Here's our foundational scripture for the day. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. From the very beginning, the Holy Spirit was active, the Holy Spirit was present, and the Spirit of God brought order to the chaos. This is the Holy Spirit brings order. I know people who've gotten, they've, they've received Christ. They've become a disciple. They've called upon the name of the Lord. They are now saved and their lives were complete chaos. Their marriage was in chaos. Their kids was in chaos. Their, everything about them was in chaos. But they started surrendering their life to the Lord and they started giving their, their, their spiritual journey has now begun. And now their life that was in chaos has now, because of the Holy Spirit, in them, their life has started to, to, to get into control. And their, their children, they're, they're, they yielded their family, they yielded their home, they yielded their wife, they yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit started bringing order to their chaos. This is what the Holy Spirit does. When the Holy Spirit shows up, the Holy Spirit brings order to the chaos. And it's been happening from the very beginning. Before we're saved, before we come to Christ, our life is crazy. It's full of drama. It's full of, uh, uh, of chaos. But when we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes. The executive arm of the Trinity comes to bring order into our life. His power changes us. The Holy Spirit brings order. The purpose of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the same chapter, now we just talked about one God in three persons or three expressions, in three forms. We talked about the water, the liquid. We, turned about, we talked about the ice or solid mass. And then we start, talked about the steam, all three expressions, all water. Now we look in the very first chapter, Genesis chapter one, a few verses down, verse 26. Then God said, this is, this is the first conversation in the Bible. I want you to look at this. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, who's God talking to? It was, now listen to this. This, this, is, this, is, this will blow your mind if you never thought about this. It was the plan of the Father spoken by the Son and executed by the Spirit. The Trinity, three expressions, all one. It was the plan of the Father, spoken by the Son, executed by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit breathed into the dust. The Spirit of God made us in God's image. Did you know you're made in God's image? Made in God's image. So important, it's so powerful. The Spirit of God brings order to our chaos, the Ruach, or this, this, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind of God brings order to our chaos. This is God's design, it's God's idea, it's God's blueprint for our life. I want you to understand that this week is so foundational. I want you to make a decision right now, that you will not miss the next two weeks. The next two weeks, if you miss a Sunday, you're gonna miss something that's so foundational that's gonna take us into that third message that's gonna, everything, the light is gonna come on. I've been, I've been living, I've been, I've been breathing these messages for the last few weeks, and I know that God has given me something powerful for us so that we will walk away with a new understanding, so we would walk away to see what the Bible actually says about the Holy Spirit. So make a decision, do not miss the next two weeks because this, this, this series is groundwork, and this week is so foundational. So... Groundational, groundational. <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> groundational thought number one. <laughs> Foundational thought number one. It, it's okay to, uh, the moment I start taking myself too serious, it's a dangerous place. Um, 
Um, the Lord has given you to me to keep me humble. <laughs> Foundation thought number one, when we, when we place our trust in Christ, when we get saved, ask for forgiveness of our sin, and we, we become the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Foundation thought number two, the Holy Spirit has been present from the very beginning. Here's thought number three. Foundation thought number three. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come to live, come up on people, not to live inside people. In the Old Testament, this is the Old Testament. And we're gonna take a look at this over the next two weeks, we're gonna look at this. In the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit did not live in people, but the Holy Spirit would come and clothe people like a jacket or like a robe, would clothe priests, kings, and prophets. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but, but I, I want, we're gonna talk about this because in the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost, the day the church was born, the Holy Spirit came to do something different and that is to live inside us. We became the temple of the Holy Spirit as salvation. Now, two weeks today, two weeks from today is Pentecost Sunday. This Pentecost Sunday is celebrated by believers, Christians all around the world there will be Christians that they will be celebrating Pentecost Sunday. And I have a feeling that there's a lot of people in the room today that you don't understand what Pentecost Sunday is all about. And in fact, you've, you see in Acts chapter two, the Bible says that they were all filled with the spirit. And this, the church was born at that point. In fact, last year I had the opportunity of standing again on the Southern steps where I believe that the Spirit of God, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened, and I do believe the church was born. There was many, many places, plus the Pool of Siloam, that these 3,000 believers that got saved, all of these would have been baptized right in these places, right on the southern steps, our mikvahs, these little pools, they're everywhere in which people could have been baptized in. And of course, not, step, not very many steps from there, Jesus, Jesus went to this Pool of Siloam Many times you can read about it in scripture and this is where people would have been baptized in masses on that day. Just like what's happening today, people were baptized in water, the water baptism. That happened just like that on those southern steps. So we were there where this event of the day of Pentecost took place. So uh, Pentecost is a day, Pentecost is an event, and Pentecost is 40 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The biggest difference between what we believe and every other religion of the world is that Jesus Christ, he has been resurrected from the dead and there is no other person alive that has been, that, 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 that in, in all of religion, that, that when they died, that they came back to life other than Jesus Christ. Our Savior was killed, he was put in a tomb and he was resurrected from the dead. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. 40 days, 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days on the earth before he ascended to heaven, and then 10 more days was the day of Pentecost. In fact, Jesus, for 40 days after he come out of the tomb, for 40 days, he goes around, he talks to, to disciples, he shows himself to many people. In fact, there was one occasion where he showed himself to over 500 people at one time. Jesus Christ is not dead, he is alive. There was many people that saw him, his disciples saw him and many others saw him. Just put that down, put a pin in that, just make sure that you believe that because that is foundational to everything that we believe. Now. 40 days, Jesus showed himself, gave instruction, gave us the great commission, all of these things to the disciples. He says, do not leave Jerusalem. Don't leave until the spirit of God is gonna be poured out upon you. Don't leave Jerusalem. And then Jesus ascends to heaven and 10 days after the 40 days, he ascends, 10 days later, Pentecost. Pentecost means 50 it means 50. So the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. Now I'm going to give you, 
We're going to talk about two holidays. There's actually three holidays that help us understand God's plan for us all. We only have time to talk about two today, but I'm going to explain this to you. In fact, if you were here on Palm Sunday, I talked about Passover to great lengths. If, you're, if you weren't here on Palm Sunday, I, I highly encourage you to go back and get that teaching. But we're going to talk about Passover, this first holiday that I'm going to teach to you today. The Passover, it's the celebration of the Exodus. Again, I explained this on Palm Sunday in great detail. But it is, they're celebrating the Exodus where the, the, the children of Israel was in slavery. They was in Egypt and they were in bondage. And even to this day, Jews, uh, to, to this day, they still celebrate Passover. And so the, the Jews would have, in, while they were in exit, while they were in slavery, while they were in bondage, what they would have done is taken a perfect lamb. They would have inspected that lamb. And then they would have brought that lamb to live inside their home on these days of inspection. And then on on the night of Passover, they were commanded to, to sacrifice these lambs, to take that blood and put the blood of that lamb, that lamb that had no blemish, and put it on their doorpost so the death angel would pass over them. Everybody say Passover. So the death angel would pass over them, and so there would be no uh, firstborn killed. This is the Passover. They, they would take the lamb at 9 a.m., they would sacrifice that lamb. They would put the blood on the doorpost. At 3 p.m., they would roast that lamb and put that blood on the doorpost. And the blood from that sacrificed lamb covered their sins. Covered. It's a very important. Covered. Now, Jesus came to fulfill this holiday. Jesus, Jesus was the perfect lamb. We talked about this on Palm Sunday to great extent. But he was, he was sacrificed at 9 a.m. He was put in the tomb at 3 p.m. And then his blood removes our sins, not just covers our sins. That's a big, it's, it's really important that you understand this is foundational. Now, the second holiday is Pentecost, and that's what we're talking about today. Pentecost, it means 50, 50 days after the first holiday or the Passover that we just talked about. It's seven weeks after Resurrection Sunday, 50 days after the resurrection. This original Pentecost, which is in two weeks, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and a cloud descended with fire. God wrote his law on tablets of stone. And in conjunction with that, 3,000 people were killed because of the, the, the golden calf, if you will remember the story. Now, on the day of Pentecost, <laughs> on, that was the original Pentecost, but on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit descended with fire again. God wrote his law on our hearts instead of tablets of stone, and 3,000 people were saved instead of killed because of a golden calf. Now, it's very important for us to get this. And in fact, we don't do a lot of teaching on this, and I, I'm committed that we're going to teach on this so we'll have a better understanding. In the Old, in the Old Testament... Holy Spirit would come upon people. In the New Testament, now we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. He comes to live inside us. In the Old Testament, there was this select group of people that the Holy Spirit would be able to come and clothe them. Kings, priests, and prophets. We're going to look at a couple of them right now. The, this Old Testament example is the anointing of the first king of Israel. His name was Saul. And the Holy Spirit came upon him. And Samuel went to find Saul. This is 1 Samuel 10, verse 1. Write this down so you can go back and look at it. Then Samuel took a flask of oil, and this oil is a, is a symbol, represents the Holy Spirit. Samuel took a flask of oil that represented the Holy Spirit and poured it on Saul's head. And he kissed Saul and said, it, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? I could teach on that with the current events. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. This is verse 6. Skip forward to verse 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you. The Holy Spirit came to cover or to clothe Saul in that moment. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you like this, the Holy Spirit's empowering you to turn into another man, turning, turning you from weak into strong, empowering you to say things 
that you would not normally say. In fact, we'll look at this in two weeks when Peter, the first preacher, he couldn't, he couldn't even stand up to a peasant girl. But yet, being filled with the Spirit, now Peter has a boldness that he did not have before. We'll, we'll look at this. We'll unpack this. But I want you to understand that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you like this, and it did this with Paul, this is, verse 6 says, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. You'll be from inadequacy to adequacy, from incapable to now you're confident. Your life is to be empowered by the Spirit of God. You will now have great discernment that you did not have before. We see another couple of exa examples of this. In Judges chapter 6, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And then he blew the trumpet. That's my favorite verse. He blew the trumpet. But the Spirit of the Lord was upon him at that point. And then he did great things at that. So the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon Moses, came upon Samson, and also came upon David. Now, as I, write, as I wrap this up today, I want to make a bold declaration to you and let you know that the Spirit of God that has been around from the very beginning, the Spirit of God that upon your salvation and upon your confession of faith is already living and dwelling in you. God wants to empower you and fill you with his spirit to overflowing that take you from incapable to capable and take you from not, not being adequate, not being adequate. Now you're more than adequate. You're confident. God wants to do something in you that is very powerful. God wants to do this. You can only do so much in your own strength. Willpower will only take you so far. Being filled with the Holy Spirit does not make me better than you. Being filled with the Holy Spirit makes me better than me. I'm turned into another man. What I could not do before, I can do now. It is by His Spirit, saith the Lord. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm already preaching the second week. Y'all come back next week. You hear? You can be turned into another man or another woman. You can be filled with His Spirit to where you can do things that you never believed or dreamed you can do. In fact, many of you, you've been saved a long time, but you've never told your story of salvation once. Many of you, you've been saved a long time, but somehow it feels as if you have, you, you've been a leaky vessel. It feels as if you have no power, you have no strength. We're going to talk about that over the next two weeks. Because as we're turned into another person, or the person that God has called us to be, the person that God has called us to do things that we didn't think that we could do. In other words, when you say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, when you're spirit-filled, you'll be able to do something more powerful than you've ever known before. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, this is a message paraphrase. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. I want all that God has for me. And I know that you want all that God has for you. By our very nature, if you've said yes to Jesus, if you've said yes to becoming a disciple, you, you agree with this, you'll agree with this statement that if God has a gift for me, if God has something for me, if God has a purpose for me, if God has something for me, I, I, I want it. I want to do what God's calling me to do and I want to be empowered to do what he's calling me to do. I'm looking in the faces of some people that I know that God has called you to do some things. And over the next two weeks, I believe that God is going to fill us mightily with his spirit. In fact, when you look at that Ephesians chapter 4, saying that don't take such a gift for granted, in this same thought process, 
this is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. He's writing to believers. He says in Ephesians chapter five, just a few verses later, he says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Some of y'all need to hear that. <laughs> so, I'm just, that was free too. Do not get drunk on wine. Why? Which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit. Be being filled, be continually filled with his spirit. This is what this verse means. We can't change ourselves, but what we can do is position ourselves. And over the next two weeks, that's what I'm going to be doing is positioning myself where I can receive all that God has for me. And I, my prayer is that God will give you all that he's calling you to be. Because human nature avoids, refuses, and pushes away the things that we do not understand. So for the next two weeks, we're going to be looking into what does the scripture say about the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the power of God, because again, the Holy Spirit isn't weird. People are weird, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is not weird. Right where you are, I'm gonna change the direction of this message. And uh, I know that in a room this size with this many people, there's possibly somebody here. You've been affected by this message. In fact, you've, you've enjoyed the presence of the Lord. There's been something here today that you've not experienced in a long time. In fact, you came today, you, you needed what, what was happening in this room today. That's God's presence moving. In fact, I, I sense God's presence here right now. God is here. He's with us right now. And you say, you say, Pastor, I, I'm learning what you're saying. I'm hearing what you're saying. I, but I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. Or maybe you need to make a decision today that says, I want to be a disciple. I, I, I want in on this life of knowing Christ, that he's my Lord and he's my Savior. So with every head bowed, every every eye closed right now all across this place. Please, no one look, moving around or looking around at this moment. This is, a, this is a holy moment of the Lord. People are doing business right now with the Lord. I'm just gonna ask you this very simple question. You say, Pastor, I've, I've, really, I've really loved everything I, I've experienced today. And this teaching has been eye-opening. In fact, I've, I've really loved it, but, but I'm not following Christ. I need to ask for forgiveness of my sin. I need to call upon the name of the Lord. I need to trust in Jesus. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. And if that's you today, I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up. No one's looking around. Just slip your hand up. I just want to know who I'm praying for. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Four or five hands. Yes, God bless you, son. I see you. My left, your right. I'm just going to scan this audience right now. Just slip your hand up so I can see it, so I know who I'm praying with. God bless you. I see you. I see you. To my right, to your left. Anybody in the cascade? To my right, on the floor. Okay, there's been there's been several hands lifted today. Here's what I'd like for us to do. I want us to all pray together. Can we just stand up all across this house? We're about to go. We're about to leave this place. But before we do, we're, there's some people making some decisions today for Jesus Christ. And so what I want us to all to do together is let's all pray together. I can't pray for you. I'm just going to help you right now. and Just repeat this prayer after me and mean it. Believe it in your heart and you will be saved is what the Bible says. So let's all just say this prayer together. Say, Father God, come on, everybody together. Father God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Forgive me of my sin. I want to be a disciple. I want to live for you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin. I want to live for you forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Many hands today. I'm thankful for that. Now listen, if you just raised your hand, you just said that prayer, maybe for the first time, or maybe you're rededicating your life to the Lord, here's what I'd love to do. I'd love to pray with you just for a moment right over here. In fact, I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward all the way across this house right here. But if you raised your hand just a moment ago, I'm going to bless the people and I'm going to send them out and send them home. But before you leave, if you will, we'd love to have one word of prayer with you before you go, okay? Is that fair? 
All right, everybody raise your hand. I want to bless you and send you home. Father God, bless your people rising up and lying down. I pray, Father, that you would go with your people this week, that we would be empowered by your spirit, Lord, that we would, that we would do the things you're causing us to do, that you have willed for us to do. And I pray, Lord, that we would be, be so ready to do what you called us to do. Bless your people, I pray, as we go in Jesus' name.